Okay, so now I'm going to talk about being a professional photographer and just some of the big points of um, ethical and copyright concerns. There's a lot of stuff you have to worry about, but these are just some of the big ones. So, first of all, when do you need a model or property release? So, a model and property release is a legal document that says that you do have permission to use the likeness of either a person or a place for commercial usage. Now commercial usage means that you are selling the image to be used for an advertisement of sort. Okay, So without that you cannot sell an image to be used. Alright, so you have to have those releases. Now for a model release uh, an important note is that if you cannot recognize a person, you don't need a model release. So let's say you have a silhouette of a person, or a person is walking away from you in the photograph and you can't tell who it is. Then you don't need a model release. Now on the same note, if that person had a recognizable hairstyle or tattoo or something else um, on the back of them, then yes, you would need a model release. So. It's an important thing to think about. Property release, same thing. Now let's say I took a photo of the Tower Theater and I wanted to sell it to somebody uh, for them to use. Now if they were going to use it for an advertisement, I would need a property release. I would need to go to the owners of the property and make sure that they sign the release. Now um, let's say if I was using it for editorial purposes, like we talked about last week, where there was a magazine doing an article about the Tower Theater, then I wouldn't need a property release. So it's a fine line, but you do have to make sure that you take these things into consideration. Now there are examples of times when photographers thought they did everything they were supposed to do and they still got in trouble. That leads me to the farmer and the goose story. So um, what happened was a photographer was hired by a, a fair to take photos of um, people who had entered things into the fair and one of the people was a farmer and his prize-winning goose. So he had a model release from the farmer and it was used by the fair for what they needed it for. About 10 years later, the photographer decided to sell a whole bunch of images to a card company, uh, a company that makes um, you know thank you cards and such like that, and they did a lot of comedy style cards. And they used the image of the farmer and the goose and they made a funny card insinuating that the farmer and the goose had a romantic relationship. Well, somebody that the farmer knew happened to see the card, told the farmer, and the farmer sued the photographer. The photographer thought they were fine because they had the model release. Well, they were actually, um, the court ruled in favor of the farmer, saying that the farmer signed the release thinking that it was for a very specific purpose and that purpose went beyond that and the farmer would not have signed the release if they knew that later it would be used for a different way. So an example of how having a release sometimes doesn't protect you. Okay, so another important note is that if you're getting paid to photograph something and I mean, and, you know, the example I'm going to give, I don't even think she was going to get paid but there was an understanding, um, then it's important to get it in writing, okay? Get in writing what you are going to deliver. Are you delivering prints? Are you delivering digital files? Um, how are they going to pay you? How much they're going to pay you? When they're going to pay you? And how they can use the rights, uh, how they can use the photos. Can they use it on social media? Can they use it um, to make as many copies as they want? Can they use it to even sell the image on their own? Okay, these are all important things. So the example I'm going to use is um, I had a friend and she was talking to another friend that was going to get married. And, the, and they were talking and she was like, well, I don't know if I have a budget for a photographer. And the other girl said, well, if you don't, let me know and I can take photos for you. So the bride thought that they had made an agreement at that point that she was going to be her photographer. The other girl thought that the bride was going to get back to her. So wedding day comes around and the quote-unquote photographer, um, her kid got sick and she didn't end up going to the wedding. Bride was crazy upset. Um, once in a lifetime event, she's getting married and there's no photographer there. Okay, So uh, a lot of Facebook drama happened 
and uh, basically all over miscommunication. So that's one of the biggest reasons to get it in writing. You don't want there to be a miscommunication. Um, you know, what's going to happen if someone can't show up? Things like that. All of those scenarios should be in a contract. So always important to get it in writing. And another good reason why you shouldn't just hire a random person, or not even hire, but you know, ask your cousin or uncle to photograph a big day like your wedding, you should always get a professional um, to take care of it. Another reason is because that professional should have insurance. And um, there's insurance for photographers for all kinds of things. It's very specific insurance for photographers such as what if your equipment breaks or you lose your images. So I'm going to go to this site and show you, um, this is just one option. There are a lot of places that actually have photographer insurance. There's different types of photography insurance that come in homeowners insurance, all kinds of stuff. But this is specifically for professional photographers uh, through PPA, which is Professional Photographers of America. So um, some of the insurance options is uh, basic insurance, basic equipment insurance. So basic equipment insurance, what happens if your, photog your photo gear breaks? Okay, what if it is lost or damaged? What if it was stolen? What if your equipment breaks or your computer breaks? Okay, so there is specific insurance for photographers that uh, this one in particular covers $15,000 of coverage, which you might think that's a lot, but professional cameras um, can start around $6,000 just for the camera body. And I don't know if you guys remember, but when I talked about the advantages of having high-end DSLR cameras, is one of the advantages is having a, a dual memory card slot. So you can have your images writing to two memory cards at the same time, just in case one memory card goes bad. Okay, so. Um, so yeah, if you're working with a very expensive camera, very expensive lens, falls in the water, <laughs> well, at least you have insurance. You have a deductible, 250 bucks, might seem a lot, but to cover um, a camera and lens that's a combination of $12,000, 250 is nothing, right? So um, another really important one, data loss and malpractice. What happens if um, you shot a wedding and then on the way home somebody uh, steals your camera so you get in a car accident and everything's destroyed uh, things like this happen and so you know if you're shooting a wedding well that's a big deal you can't just recreate it uh, for nothing right it's gonna cost money so there's a lot of things that can go in um, PPA you know take will help you with data recovery if your memory card goes bad it helps pay settlement that they're involved with. It can help you for court, give you legal advice. Okay, it can pay judgments for most types of damages. That is huge. Okay, that is a really big deal um, because this kind of stuff does happen. What if someone just paid 25 grand for their wedding and now there's no photos? How are they gonna remember their wedding? They were counting on your photos. So if you get sued, it's really important that you have some type of insurance for that. Um, there's other stuff too, general liability, enhanced equipment insurance, more money and such, drone insurance, then of course, you know, photographers need medical and dental also. All right, so um, there are all kinds of things that you have to think about as a professional photographer, and those were just a couple. So next video, we're going to talk about Fair Use Act and appropriation.